Mark chapter 6, verse 30. I have to come to rest. Jesus pulls his team to one side and he insists that they rest. It's really great. It reminds me of that wonderful bit in uh, Matthew 11 where he says, Come unto me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, because I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. Isn't that amazing? Those words just go right into the centre of our deepest needs and say something that's satisfying and wonderful. Sometimes people think that uh, happiness is the goal of Christianity, but Jesus never promises happiness. He says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome this, the world. Come unto me if you're struggling and in trouble and I will give you rest. So he doesn't promise happiness, but he does promise rest, shalom. That's wonderful. And he had the right to say it because he had it to give. Wow, and you think about Jesus at the, uh, the wedding, you know, and totally unflustered. You know, so, uh, you know his mum is worrying a bit about uh, the wine running out. He said, woman, it's not my time yet. He said, oh, all right, I'll, I'll do it. But he's, he's calm in the circumstance. Think of him at uh, Lazarus' tomb and everyone is weeping and wailing. Or at, uh, um, even at the daughter of um, Jairus, you know, and, and he sends out the noisy mourners. And he says, she's not dead, she's asleep. He's just calm. In the middle of crisis, Jesus is at rest. It's a wonderful picture. He had rest within it. And, Within him, And that wonderful thing when he says, uh, Martha, Martha, you are troubled and careful about many things, but only one thing is needful. And even in Gethsemane, even when he is sweating blood with the pain of what's, uh, uh, what's in front of him, he's still at rest. He's still seeking and receiving rest from his father. And he prayed that way. John 17 shows you that that, that um, calm comes from communion, com comes from fellowship with God. Rest comes from relationship. It doesn't come from the, um, the sorting out of circumstances and getting everything hunky-dory around you. So if I just sort this out, I just sort this out, then I can be at rest. No, no, Jesus was at rest in the storm. When the storm comes up, he is asleep on a cushion. That's the rest of Jesus. And we talk about rest and we sort of uh, think that if we remove all the problems, then I can have a bit of peace. But it's not the same. It's not the same. If you say, we say, if I just get these circumstances right, then I can be a perfect man. But no, 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 no. If I just remove temptations, I can be holy. And so, somebody said to me the other day, uh, opportunity knocks once or twice. But temptation leans on the doorbell. <laughs> no, no, he said, I will give you peace, not as the world gives. Not as the world gives. Not the end of problems. Not the cessation of circumstances. Not the, the forming of everything perfect. Not with a bigger bank balance. No, 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 I will give you peace, not as the world gives. Okay. The, the world proposes a rest by the removal of a burden and the Redeemer gives rest by giving you the spirit and power to bear the burden. He says, take my yoke upon you. That, that's a burden. That's a weight. He said, but it's light. It's light. It's easy. And learn of me and you will find rest for your souls. He doesn't promise the rest of uh, putting your knees up, <laughs> putting your feet up. Not the, the rest of inaction or laziness. Uh, he doesn't promise the rest when the thorns are converted into uh, roses or when the trials are removed or, or finished with. We're called to fight. And, and listen, heaven isn't hanging about on clouds either, mate. So what kind of a rest? It's not stagnation. It's not the, the rest of a, a lake that is <clears throat> stuck. It's the rest of a river that is purposeful and flowing with life and filled with joy and going somewhere, completely calm in itself. It's not the rest of a, a cow in a field. 
is the rest of an eagle soaring in the sky. Amen. Do you hear it? The only thing that stops rest is, is, is a lack of relationship. If you don't know God, if you don't feel comfortable in your own shoes, if you're not at ease inside yourself or with your situation, then that's when anxiety and depression sneaks in and gathers momentum, becomes a kind of grey cloud that covers everything. But it says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenant. That means he will show them himself. He will show them his They'll be in relationship with him. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and answers that knock and opens the door, I will come in and have fellowship with him. It's a, a wonderful picture of rest and relationship. As long as we have a wrong opinion of ourselves, it's impossible to experience true rest because there is rest available in Christ. Jesus, when he's with his disciples in Mark 5.30, he calls them to one side. He knows what's ahead. He knows that the business is furious. He knows that the needs around him are shouting out. This is just before he's going to feed 5,000. All, all these loads of calls upon his time. He says, as for you, you need to just spend time with me. Take it easy. Be quiet. Be still. Listen, and you will find rest for your heart.